Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. This is Wix Online Triage Meeting 12.8. We're getting into the essentially end of December for those of you that take off the last couple of weeks of the year, every year, doing the thing. <laughs> Whatever it might be for your holidays. Uh, note, we are recording this for those people that aren't able to attend in person. Um, it is my plan to finally get all these posted because I'm about four or five behind. Um, so with that, since this is our last time, let's go see how many bugs we can get through in this time slot we have. I know we got kind of a big incoming this last couple, uh, last, I don't know, 24 hours practically. Basically. And so we may skip over a lot of this stuff if we can't figure it out straightforward wise, um, but we'll go from there. Um, so starting at the top. Wix installation hangs on 3.8. You must delete devamp.exe. Delete devamp? That doesn't probably kill devamp.exe. Um, so dev div hangs when we probably are trying to tell it that it needs to update its um, registration for votive. Um, it'd be nice if devamp didn't hang. Well, yeah, which DevMV is a good question. We won't know that. Um, don't know what we do. I guess we could write a process around DevMV that kills it if it hangs, and then we try again or something like that. That'd be about the only thing we could do here. Yeah. Um. I guess we could say that. So add a comment that this is a dev env problem and we may try to add something that could kill it and then continue, even though it's kind of mean. Although I guess that would be really bad if we did that if you had dev env open, like editing a project and they got a hang. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do that. Mm. Well, don't we, de we detect dev env running, so that shouldn't happen. I see. So this would just be if it's invisible and we... Well, I mean, ideally what we need to do is wrap our own invocation of DevM setup with a watchdog that... Yeah, okay, fair enough. We could do that. Um, so why don't we add a comment about that, and we could take that in 3x if we wanted. Agreed? Um, yeah. We already have wrappers for DevM setup. We could create a cooler wrapper with DevM setup. Heat fails harvesting MFC. People still use MFC in 2012? Wow. I feel for you. Um, all right. So heat needs to be updated to understand something they're doing new. Yeah, we could take that in 3x. Be a good thing for it to do. If they change it, we probably should slowly adapt. Agreed? Yes? No. Uh, sorry, I'm... I'm you're faster than me at this, apparently. Oh, sorry. Well, it says heat, it says MFC, and then I saw down here they have a new string that they're doing something with, so it's like heat should understand that. I'm like, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think that's fine. Heat can do that. That works. Yeah. Doc bug. Building Wix topic still refers to VS 2008. Yeah, okay, we probably don't need that anymore. Not in 3.9. So yeah, could remove that. Could be done in 3x. Yep. Oh, we get into those things. This is Heath's bug that he was talking about. Support compat mode update to that. So yeah, this we think is already fixed, right? Yes. Cool. So let's, I guess, resolve it fixed. And Heath can go figure out if his change is different from the change we have. Right. Good for him for hiding his changes for so long. Uh, migrate various other fixes. That's very descriptive. Um, add Wix perf counter. Sure. Add another one. Change git action default so that plan can differentiate between apps absent. Yeah, this bug was opened by somebody else, and I don't remember where we put it. Um, the 
first one totally fine. Why is this one issue? Uh, these are totally different things. <laughs> this is easy. This, I guess we'd have to see it to make sure it doesn't back, break backwards compatibility. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not clear what that's. I don't know how you do that. I mean, right, right. Do we say resolve this and split it into two issues? Yeah, these are so different. These are these aren't even close to each other because this thing is burn and this is some random. Let's let's resolve this as no and tell them to take the that we would take the first one and we need to review the second one as long as it's not. I, honestly, this would be a good thing to do as long as it doesn't break backwards compatibility in a horrible way. Maybe we have to push this to four. This has to be split because this we could take in three yeah. X. This we may have to take in four. So yeah, let's. Uh, this is why. You do not put multiple issues in one bug. Is that cool? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. We have resolved a number of bugs. Yes. Right. X86 running on X64. Use that to get Wusa. Okay. I could see that being interesting. Don't do something with that. It's busy. Okay. Fine. MSU should retry to should try to stop and start with a service. Yeah, okay, I could see that. Yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. I don't. That's all internal. Yeah, that should be able to go in three X or okay. three nine. Since since he's assigned it to himself, we could take that in three nine. Yep. Upgrade code to product search. We also already have this one. But what's the second thing? Remove search type from manifest. Uh, this was implemented in two steps. Um, it, it's fine. Okay, so we have this as well, and he can once again figure out if there's something special about his versus ours. Merge directories when linking. Yeah, I've been thinking about this. I want to talk about this one. Um, let's leave this untriaged. I want to understand this one better before we take it. Yep. Yeah, simplified Wix. Yeah. All right. Always verify hash of payloads before they are the to verify their right payload. Always verify the hash, but we always do. To the same directory where payloads might have existed, the, uh, the authentic code signature does not sufficient. Well, then why would you ever have authentic code signatures? If we're always going to check the hash, why bother with the authentic code signature? That's a good question. Because this is just something that fails all the time. It's like, screw it, we'll just do hashes. Uh, before every hash check. I don't understand. This must have been a bug introduced by something. I don't know what that did. Yes. Share the MSI and you rerun layout in the same directory. Layout will fail. This may be a bug we have open where if you run layout, it doesn't it doesn't pick up where it left off, or it doesn't figure out that the same files are there. Oh, that was a feature request, right? Yeah, that was a feature request. Although it is also a bug, depending on how you get into the the functionality. So uh, I don't understand why we would do one. Let's leave this untriaged. We have to talk about this. This seems so stupid because if you do that, then you'd never bother. Why bother? Honestly, if we quit authentic code verifying, that'd be awesome because that's just thing is pain in the butt. Well, I mean, that, that's valid too. I mean, even if you don't authentic code sign. So the question is, do you do you want to do this check? The ha do you want to do the hash check always? Right. Well, if you do that, there's no point in doing the authentic code check. Okay, so so to leave authentic code out of the equation. Right. Do you always want to verify the hash? Well, if you take the authentic code out of the thing, then we always verify the hash. Except maybe in a couple, maybe in this layout case, which at that point, that's interesting. But you, you see what I'm saying? Like, this here sounds like during an install, oh, to the same directory where the payloads might have existed, merely checking the... So if you have a signed package... That's the same in version one and version two, but you mix them up. Basically, what he's saying here is that you can you can pop in a package that's not that doesn't go with 
a particular bundle, but that bundle doesn't know that. Is because... maybe if this is all about sources? Yes. Then this is the other. We have a bug tracking this issue then, because there is a bug where if you have a file named the right thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The right file. It's, it doesn't even. That has nothing to do with authentic code. That purely is if you have a yeah. file that's named the right thing in the directory, burn will perpetually not be happy about it. Right. Well, that's why I suggested taking authentic code out of the sentence here because I it's see. all about the source. Yeah. Okay. Well then, then this is this is another bug. So right, we could dupe this bug to that or that bug to this, and that's already in three X. So, okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. So this is basically two bugs we already had. Could be the fixes for those. That would be cool. I don't know what this. I hope that's what this means. So I don't know what to do with this bug. Do we tie it to those other two bugs? Um, do we leave it open to discuss it? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know slash care. I mean, do we want to open it? If you're happy with what's here, then we can open it. Otherwise, we probably should. Keep it untriaged until we can get an opportunity to talk with Heath, either mail or. Yeah, I, I this one, I, yeah, I want to know what this one means. Oh look, there's a Heath, who's. Oh, not all right. Um, so, hopefully he's on. Yeah, okay, cool. So Heath, you'll. Have just use the IM window because just have a couple things. This bug is weird. We're we're a little confused about this bug because it has this thing about authentic code signatures and always verifying the file again, even if um, the authentic code signature is um, matches. But that doesn't make any sense because if you did that, then you would we should never bother with the authentic code signatures because we're always going to verify the hashes. However, Bob brought up the point, which other later parts of this seem to suggest is that this is about verifying that the file you find locally, no matter how you might have got it, um, is actually the file you want. Because there is another bug open on burn already, which maybe this, this is what this is about, is that if you have a file with the same name in the directory, burn will incorrectly use that instead of the correct source. Is that what this bug is about? And yes or no inside, or whatever. I'm assuming he can hear us after I did all that. Maybe he can't. At which point, that's not going to be very helpful. All those things I said will be recorded for posterity to re go over this bug. Ah, great. He's gone. All right. How about we come back and see if he gets... We'll, we'll come back to these bugs at the end. Sound good? That'll work. Um, we'll see what they are. By the way, I need to figure out where we started. Wait, do we really start at 200? That's too funny. 201, actually. 201. To All right. Okay, cool. 201. We started 201. I'm going to type that right here. That does not mean I think we're getting through 201 bugs. In fact, I think we're not getting through nearly as many as we normally would. All right. Remaining ref count and sticky patching features. So as long as there's no breaking... I went through this list before when you sent it around. Um, as long as we don't have any breaking changes, I think this is fine. Um, I'd like to see all the changes because this is going to be really nasty stuff, but um, I think this would be a good thing to take. So let's take this and assume that all the changes are going to be good that we would take this. Because there's a lot of little bugs in here that could get fixed, that could fix things, or big bugs like the whole upgrade packages if that actually is solved well. Agreed? Yes, sorry. Yes. Just chuckling at the contrast between take it, assume it's good versus the previous bug we Sorry. discussed. Well, no, the previous one I don't understand. This I understand what they're yes. all trying to do. Like, if I understood what that last one was, I, it would be the same thing. I just don't understand what's going on in that bug, the way it's written. Because if it's really about ignoring authentic code all the time, that's dumb. <laughs> that, that, so I'm hoping that's not what it is. So, yes. Cool. So I th we would take that. Various patch build issues. D 
double bind? Double bind. What is double bind? I think it's rebinding a Wix out. Relinking a Wix out. Oh, we should talk about relinking a Wix out. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, make all patches. I, I don't like this mixing of burn stuff with build stuff, but okay. Um, yeah, this seems reasonable. This seems reasonable. We should. It'd be interesting to see these changes too. Yeah, a lot of these make sense. Well, I'm always for improved logging, so. <laughs> yes. That, uh, was one, that was one of mine. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. So, again, be interesting to see that. Cool. I think we're out of the Microsoft up with the real world. Burn fails to install if root certificates are missing. Burn does. Okay. So, if you don't have certificates on your machine and you have something signed, they probably don't update. Can you install this? Well, not if the bundle signed, right? Because X, I don't know. Does XP check the signature of an XE before running it? <laughs> so long ago, probably not. So that probably is fine. So then it is a matter of chaining this into your bundle before you go through and making it okay that you are going to update a machine's certificates before installing. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, I'm inclined to say that Burn shouldn't be doing that. I I agree with that. I mean, technically... Honestly, some... if you're on Windows Update, these should be being updated. That's my understanding of how these get updated, is through Windows Update, normally. And soon, that's not going to matter for XP either, so XP is just going to slowly decay. I don't know what to do about it. It's, just, it's like I was saying before, it's going to become a danger to the Internet. All those XP machines. Well, but I mean, technically, the same problem would occur on a Vista machine, right? If it's and not on Windows Update, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what you know. He explicitly mentions XP embedded. XP so. embedded. You're right. So that makes it even more likely. I, I think you'd have to chain it in. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it's going to work if you do the. Uh, um, I don't you, want Burn carrying this all the time. It would no, be cool no. if someone wanted to contribute the feature that says, here's a package ref for the latest set of you know, root certificates for Burn. Yeah. But that probably gets out of date, so I don't know what we would do there. But, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, this is machine maintenance. This isn't installation problem. Like, your machine's past its prime. XP embedded, your certificates need to keep being updated. Or don't sign your stuff, which is a completely different problem. Well, the problem is you might be including, say, you know, .NET Framework or something that is signed. Well, then they have to update the certificates. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that's reasonable. I'm assuming yeah. that, you know, you could actually... Yeah, that you could... Download this and oh, lovely. oh, oh I'm not no! Going through a verification. Oh man! Yeah, see, they want to protect against the pirated XPs. Um, yeah, I this is I don't think this is us. I think they need to have their certificates up to date. I don't know what else we do. Yeah, I, I'm I'm willing to say that installing on a machine that is both offline and unmaintained is is call for special care. Yeah, I, I don't know what we would do. If something is is authentic code signed, you can't suppress that check. Is that correct? No, that would be a security thing. Right. Well, yes. No. 
Sorry. No, 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 no. In burn, you can say suppress. Um, you can tell burn to use the hash instead of the authentic code signature for something. You can tell, sorry, during your build, you can make that decision, but not at runtime. Sure, sure. So, yes, at build time, you can say don't, you know, don't use the authentic code signature. Uh, it's like a big, huge, long thing. Suppress authentic yeah. code signature or something like that. Suppress signature validation or something like that. So you can do that. That's that, you're right. That's a workaround for this, is to not, is to verify things by verify things by hash instead of signature. Okay, I'm I'm willing to say, for you know closed environments, use um, use the uh, suppress signature verification attribute to turn off authentic code checking. Yeah, suppress signature verification. Yep. Otherwise, you can chain in root cert update. Although, truthfully, you should probably tell people you're doing that. <laughs> you're well, and I think actually it's a it's a bit of a problem since it's clearly not redistributable. Oh yeah, no, probably not redistributable. Not with that check in from Microsoft in front of it. Right, and therefore probably not something you can chain in via remote payload. Well, be their call. <laughs> they could go have that conversation with Microsoft. You know, maybe yes. they're an XP embedded you know partner or something like that, and they can go get that or something. Uh, Heath, I never figured it out, so. Oh, wait, he probably can't hear me if he can't run the. Yep. Yeah, the, the, it opens automatically in the thick client for me. Well, yes, but you're running the meeting. Oh, no, that's true. I am special that way. Um, all right, so are we on to the next bug then? Um, yeah. All right, so now that we have Heath back, should we try to go back and, or can you, can he even hear us yet? Do we know? I don't know. I don't think he, if. If we may just have to let Heath try to go have a day where he tries to get his link stuff hooked up like we did right. for everybody a while ago. Yeah, that's true. All right. Melt. Melt, rebase, and not extract binaries from the MSI. Melting takes about 35 minutes. Sure. I can copy it down. Pyro complains it cannot find the binaries. Because, of course, it rewrote the paths. To his local machine. Right. So we could do relative paths instead. It might work. Or yeah, that might work. I, I, actually. Why wouldn't it? We did that before, right? I don't know. Maybe it won't. Um... Uh, actually, relative path. Where's relative? You know, it'd have to be relative path to whatever we base it on. I don't know if we base it on Wix PDB. Well, I mean, we'd ha we'd have to obviously we'd have to pick a spot. You know, we'd have to say, well, because right now you give it a directory, and it's going to put everything in that directory. So we can make it relative to that directory. And it sounds like this is an interesting thing, but we should go talk about the design on Wix devs. True. Um, I suppose, I mean, or if, if, if relative paths would work, then we would just make that relatively minor change in melt. Right. Otherwise, yeah, you know, we would have to break, break apart the rewriting from the 
um, from the extraction, which is perfectly reasonable. All right, so we would go either way. So it really comes down to what's the right way to implement this. So, But we could take it 3x. Yeah, sure. All right, so we could take it 3x. We should go talk about the design, because he's got a fork, which, of course, is only so helpful. We need a pull request, but, you know, whatever. Well, yeah. it's empty. Uh, awesome. All right, but it seems reasonable. Yeah, absolutely. I remember this bug. Oh, good, he has a sample. Big sample. Oh, Blair left a comment. Which component group is being used? All right. Component group. If that, else that. Okay. Okay. So we pull in this. Or we pull in this. The two components are separate. Oh, but this ends up pulling in this. I, wait, what the heck? So that, if you do that, you get that, and then you get some shortcuts group. You get shortcuts group, okay. This pulls in this. This pulls in this own oh, shortcuts down here. I'm so confused as to what's... Am I missing something here? <laughs> this refers... So... Alright, if OEM then pull in this... Okay, and that just pulls in these two files. And here, it pulls in those two files. Whoa, but this won't compile, well, what will it do? This won't compile, right? Oh. oh okay, yeah, no, this is expected. No, wait, <laughs> am I missing something? Do these files have different IDs? Test, test 001, test that. This should be failing to link, right? <laughs> Although, well, no, wait, yes, it, Oh, although there's no references to these, maybe. Until you get to this guy, and then there is a reference, and then they're going to get upset about each other, probably. Although if this is one file, it sh the linker should have found both of these and collided. Right? Oh, man. This is the code I'm going to be going into soon. Now I always remember to forget some of these smaller details. I kind of expect this to fail linking. But that's not what he's saying. What is he saying? Oh, not pulling components matching file IDs being exclusive from the... Oh, that's probably what it's doing. Right. Oh, not the compiler. Linker, but... I think this is by design. <laughs> Don't do this. You can't name these files the same name. They would have to be, yeah, they'd have to be. Oh, yeah, Blair put something. Yeah, yeah, right. So, yeah, th after all that, I think, I wish you would have said the exact error you got. Pulls in files from components that are being excluded. Is it pulling in or is it erroring? This seems like it should error. Because there are multiple files with the same ID. Yes. Unless I'm, like, off by a zero or something. But no. Like, this should be an error. If these two fragments are in the same file, you should be getting an error that this file is defined twice. You can't do that. Without conditionally compiling them all in. This is only conditionally compiling the reference. The linker should be getting upset here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
uh, yes, Heath, meetings are muted so we don't get cacophony of sounds running around in there. I think this is by design, although I'm a little... I wish I knew what, exactly what error message he was getting, because this doesn't sound that are being excluded during the build process. This should fail to build, or to link. Why don't you just give this to me? I'm just going to look at this today. Um, okay. And I'll take a look at this. Because I'm going to be in the linker today, so I'll just take a look. And I'll just take a look. Because I want to make sure that that, that actually is causing error. Because that file should cause an error in the linker. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to be a little... I have to go figure out why. Because my memory's off then. In the end, I, my expectation is that this is by design, not no repro. Agreed? If I get the right error. Basically, the linker saying this file is defined twice. Um, I assume. I mean, I would, you know, ping the submitter to say, like, what are you... I'll, I'll give the what error. Say, this is the error I get when running this. This is by design, and then he can yeah. reopen it if there he has go. a different error somehow. Okay. All right. Wix UI install mode is not set properly when uninstalling. Um, Wix UI install mode... Uh... <laughs> Duh, I don't know. <laughs> Wix, Wix UI install mode was intended to be a private thing. It's only used by Wix. It should only be used by Wix UI authoring to to you know well when there is a mode to set it. Awesome. Um, so say that and carry on. Yeah. Done. I know we don't document things, but when we don't document, we don't document. Right. Well, the problem is people get, because it works for common cases, they expect it to work for all of the cases. And, uh, yeah, never intended for that. Currently, you can only have one set property set with specific ID. This has been fixed. This you can now do. I remember this, and this is now fixed. All right. Because I had the same problem. Close application element is case, no, case sensitive. What? After deploying install update, we discovered another vendor used the same application name as us. Okay, so you have two X's named the same thing out there. Our install ends up closing the other vendor's app, which doesn't recover. Yeah, that would make sense. And you get Sporkle. So that's awesome. Case sensitive? No. Seriously? The difference is in case, and that's always going to be... That doesn't sound right. The, no. <laughs> I don't think Windows is going to trust it. Really, probably... No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it would work, though, wouldn't it? it you're, getting a, you're going to get a path. That Well, depending on the how short path or, you know, whatever. It, you could get it in all caps. <laughs> this, is, oh, this is really weird. It feels like a really strange side effect to assume that is always going to work out. Yeah. Well, I mean, how else are you going to do it, though? Change the name of your XE? You have a collision. True. Uh, I don't know what else you do. Changing the case seems sketchy. Well, and truthfully, it, it might fix the bug for this particular case, but, you know, it's kind of likely that you're going to also collide in casing, At some point. you know, ass assuming your XEs are going to, you know, get named in some kind of camel case or Pascal case style naming no, convention. A, no, I, the, interesting idea, but no, I'm not on Windows. I totally on Unix. I could see this working out much better, but not on Windows. <laughs> Those case-sensitive file systems, which we don't have. Add existing file to project doesn't open it in editor. It causes every file to open in the editor. It can crash Visual Studio. but it's not desirable, so we can make it optional somehow. All right, cool. We could take a feature and votive to do that. 
that's the request, we could do that if someone wanted to try to figure out how to do that. I don't. It seems reasonable. Uh, it sounds like a default behavior from MPF where if you add a file, it automatically opens it. Uh, okay. Uh, whatever. Someone could do it in 3x. <sighs> Reference counting for users and group operations. We do. It's common task rate, local users or groups, add users. There are stringent requirements to undo all install and uninstall. Yay. Are challenging because it's generally not possible to turn from other packages using the user or group. Yes, it is. What? How? Component. We, we totally remove these things based on components. So if your component ref counting is correct, these things should be correct. Which doesn't solve the problem if someone created the user outside an MSI. Oh, even though the user is, well, no. Oh, not if another package, no. I, there's nothing about creating the user outside. I totally agree. That won't solve that problem. But as long as you're using one installer and reference counting your components correctly, this will do the right thing. Okay. It doesn't mean you have to get your component goods right, which is usually the hard part. But this this works. If it doesn't work, then MSI's reference counting stuff is broken. Can't set domain for basic auth. It's great that I can create web dirs. The problem I can't set domain or our realm. Okay, I, I sure. Sounds like a feature request for IS functionality, and I don't know that we have it because I don't remember ever seeing this come in. So, yeah, we could take that feature in 3x probably. Probably be additive. Okay. Let user suppress installation of shortcuts. Install uh -huh. shortcuts on the desktop menu. Quick launch bar. Some GUI. Let don't don't <laughs> put shortcuts there. Uh -huh. Customize dialog. No. No. <laughs> it can't be. It should not be based on shortcut. No. You could customize your UI if you're going to do this, but don't do that. So, yeah. If you want to let them control it, put it in the feature tree, and install your thing in the start menu. So, yeah. No. Wix patch support in Votive. We have this somewhere else, don't we? Probably. Yeah. So, yes, fantastic. <laughs> it was last week. Extension to provide VI, VI like vertical integration. What? Hey, Heath, you're five year old. Oh, Heath. Oh, this is cute. No, <laughs> this is some weird Visual Studio thing. Share components to install the same location. Type 35 uh, extension per component. All right, good. Heath says we can kill it, so kill it. Gone. The person that opened it doesn't want it anymore. Doesn't sound great. Anyway, include file version and MSI assembly name table by default. <sighs> The .NET Framework 4.5, I noticed, started giving you assembly file version in the assembly info by default, which means I think they've given up on their statements of their old statements of side by side. Um, so I think we should take this in 4x and probably turn on file version by default. I don't think we can turn it on by default in 3. Does that make sense? I think it's just come around to we should all have the file version. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to change. Yeah, I I think we'll do this in 4x. I think it's the right thing to bring this in 4x. You can bring it 4.0 and give it to me because, again, I'm going to be in that code not too long and I'll just take it and go after it. Votive could do better supporting for UI authoring.
yes, a design view and a toolbox and all that kind of stuff. That would be awesome. We should do that. Drag and drop UI for inside motive. Someone should get on that. <laughs> we could totally take that. I think it could even done in 3x if someone wanted to do the work. All right. Cool. Bob? It's very right. quiet over there. Um, yeah, I'm catching up. I don't have. So we're going to go back. Do you want to go back and look at the ones that Heath, that we didn't have now that Heath apparently can hear us? Sure. All right. Where did I leave off here? 1688. 1688. What? Did this literally just come in? We had the second one as well. Holy cow. Let's just do them real quick. Okay. I have a solution with WPF, Wix installer. 3.5, 3.8 installed, running analyzed for crashes with a WPF project set as a startup project, prevents this from happening. Cool. Is this something we're going to try to fix in 3.9 with the whole new MPF, maybe? I don't know. Sounds like something to put in 3x and look at it, right? No. No? Deleting the Wix project and recreating it with Wix 3.8 also prevents the crash. Oh, so it's a 3.8 issue? No, it's whoa, a 3.5 issue. Oh. Apparently. Yeah, Heath, that's planned, but I, I don't think it applies to this particular bug. Guy says recreating the project fixes it. I don't think it's an MPF thing. Is or it a 3.5 thing? thing? It could be an MPF thing in that there's some crap left over in the 3.5 project that the you know, MPF doesn't like, but... Three X and try to get more information from him. Like he can continue to. Yeah, let, let's tell him to jump on Wix devs and we'll put it in three X. Right. That works. Yeah, because if he's willing to run it down, maybe he'll find a fix or find the root cause of it. Custom action contains unexpected attribute ID. Complains about every single custom action. Custom action ID. No way. What, 3.8? Uh, that's what it was opened under, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I know, because you don't have the options of choosing the other ones. No way. <laughs> Candle complains about every single custom action, e.g. Uh, example, please. No way. Because we have tons of custom actions. Yeah, we could have built links. That we, would, we would be dead all the time. Uh... No re so let's do no repro and have him provide a, a small sample case, and then if he can still repro it with a small sample case, that'd be great. But we have lots of people out there that are successfully doing this right now. Agreed? With 3.8. With 3.8. With 3.8, yes. Good point. With 3.8. All right. Merge directories when linking. No. Oh, where do we end up on this? We skipped it very early. What was the other one? Let's do this one first, because we'll do this one first. Always verify hash of payload. So Heath, now that you can hear us, the the question about this was, and, and Bob suggested that the authentic signature part shouldn't be in here, because if you always check the payload hash, even when the things are authenticode signed, you're basically defeating any purpose of ever bothering to authenticode verif to verify the files using authenticode signature because we'll just use the hash and it's a lot safer. It always works, that kind of stuff. But then Bob was pointing out that this might be about layout and some of the things. We do have bugs open where uh, if the name is the same of a file that's in place, 
burn will end up using that for resolving against local source instead of going remote. All right, so this authentic code signature and all that kind of stuff has nothing to do with this issue then, right? Other than to say it's not sufficient. We still want to verify. So, so if it's authentic code signed and we do a payload hash verification, then there's no point in even bothering doing the authentic code signature because the payload hash will be the same thing. Or, or honestly, it'll be faster, it'll be less error prone, and all that kind of stuff. So, if we're going to always verify against the payload hash, then we might as well just throw out the authentic code signatures. We could make the hash, so your point about hash being SHA-1 and SHA-52, 256 is, we could make it SHA-256 and burn. That's not interesting. So, I, I don't understand this part about authentic code signatures. Like, if we do this, then we should just quit signing or verifying against authentic code signatures and just verify against the hash and call it good. So, I mean, so Heath, you're right. You can always sign your stuff, but if Burn doesn't check it, that's fine. Like, you can sign it. It just means that we would just stop verifying against authentication. Yeah, I suppose we could try that. Let me uh -oh. do that. All right. No, 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 don't turn them on. Yeah, right. So, so the I think you're unmuted, if I did it correctly. No, no but we have to assume you have a mic that works. Yeah, can you can hear me now? Um, yes. Okay. Sorry, I had to unmute myself as well. Um, so I did look into this actually not, or just uh, not doing the hash check again, but actually using the hash and the signature. Um, the problem with doing that, though, because the authentic code, of course, provides non-repudiation. You also get the ability to um, revoke a certificate and therefore a, a payload or payloads. And so authentic code does add additional security checks that, you know, you wouldn't get with a hash even if you enable 256. Um, but no, enabling seriously, the hash like, that the, just says that you can retroactively prevent a bundle from installing, and you'd be better off pulling the signature off the bundle itself so that when it's verified, people go, oh, not signed bundle, unsigned bundle, and then do that. That's a much more direct case. I mean, what, this, what number one is saying is that we should pull authentic code's verification from burn. Which, if that's true, I'm all for it because it just creates so many problems. That's, I mean, if you're going to verify the payload hash, then just quit doing authentic code verifications and call it good. That could be a possibility. Um, right. At this know, point, if we're going to do authentic code and, and payload again, hash, I don't know if we'll ever be taking external drops again anyway. The way things are going, so yeah, I, I, that's not. I don't care about that problem because that's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You guys want to fork, you can go play that game. But the if you're going to do authentic code hashing and payload hashing, you're basically just spending twice the amount of time hashing or longer since authentic code seems to take longer than just doing the hash of the payload. So that's why I don't understand this. Well, that said, both that of these are incredibly view. fast. I mean, I think our biggest cab is around 90 to 100 megs. And we didn't even notice. Yeah, but you know, I, the, we, we have, I have customers out there that have multi-gigabyte type things, and you'll feel the hash time. So we, sh we, shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't be doing the same thing twice, essentially, which is what this is going to turn into. And, right. and again, I'm fine for it. If it says it, then... Are they also signing their payloads? It, it doesn't and matter at that point. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Because we'll just never verify the authentic code signature. You can sign it. We just won't bother checking it. Yeah. I mean, that's what this okay, number well, one I does. That... I think we should enable uh, SHA-256 then. I, I'm fine with that. Like, taking SHA-256 is fine. We have a problem with XP. So we had to go do the work to support uh, conditionally checking it and carrying both hashes and all that kind of stuff. That's the, I mean, that's right. the feature in Burn that hasn't been implemented. But that's not, that's not even hard. It's just a little block of work. So what this is saying here is that authentic yeah. signatures are not good for some reason. Yeah, oh, I remember why I couldn't actually just use the hash of the authentic code signatures because the the hash of the payload element um, in the burn manifest actually includes the signatures, so they're different. So it's not like I can just compare against you know one against the other. Uh, that's why it was because I did look into that option originally, and so I didn't actually have to do the hash check twice. Okay, but so that's why like is number one really saying authentic code 
just don't worry about Thetico signatures anymore. Just use payload hashes. I mean, that, that's that's what it reads to me. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, at that point, why don't you just do suppress signature validation and call it good? Because then we don't need that. I mean, there's still the whole SHA-256, we should add that. That's all good, separate features. Are you talking about from an authoring perspective or a uh, code oh, perspective? From a, I mean, to get what well, you want... Well, the SHA-256, of course, would be code, but I mean, the first thing no, no. you said. The, the suppressor signature validation, which gets you this behavior without changing the burn code. Right. So you'd be like, yeah, cool, we just ignore, you know, we ignore the authentic code signatures for all of our stuff. Okay. So I, that, I, I'm concerned about taking this. That one, it will end up just growing our, in, you know, slowing down burn, adding no value, removing all the value from whatever uh, value there was for authentic code only, and then where we're going. I mean, a lot of this came from the .NET framework. Like this authentic code and all that kind of stuff came from the, the way .NET framework guys did their stuff a long time ago. Right. So. Yeah, we're kind of building on that, and what we're saying is that, no, just go do hashes, which was the way that burn was designed from the beginning. So we're like, well, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so should we just close this one then and I'll open up a separate bug to support SHA-256? Well, we, let, let, we should do that anyway, so we should have that feature anyway. Now, the thing I didn't get was the second two things. Of the, the second two things were actually bugs with the first one. More so when I was going through making notes, I was working off complicated set of history.txt as well as change Understood. lists. So the the two MSI share the cab layout folder, we have a bug about layout folder and that kind of stuff not working. So I was yeah, curious. the hash check should, should um, fix that. Oh, so this only happens if they have the same authentic code? Or if they're authentic code signed? Yeah, if they're, bo if they're both valid. Um, but they have the same names because we had people, for example, dropping right. um, like VS2013 RC and RTM XCs um, into the same folder. And then when it creates a layout, of course, almost all the payloads have the same name. All right, good. So slash layout actually works correctly. It's just if you have authentic code sign stuff. But we don't, I thought slash layout didn't check the local file before downloading, it just always downloaded again. Um, no, it checks. Or at least the one we have internally. Maybe you guys have taken a change since then. Well, no, the one Lord knows that it's only we taken had long enough. The, the one, yeah, slash layout never checked the local files. We actually have a feature open to have it do that. Um, hmm, maybe right. that's a separate issue. Then I could go back. I think it was okay. um, Andy that did that one. All right. Well, you might take a look at what's going on in all of this because it, it's essentially the, the way this reads is authentic code is no longer useful don't bother checking it don't have burn bother checking it which would also solve the other bug that we punted about burn verifying the you know signatures on xp and that failing so it's like so many of our little issues around signing would just go away because burn would quit doing it Okay. So do you want me to open a separate bug then for just supporting SHA-256, and I'll no, go back and fine. talk to Andy? Yeah, if you want to open that one, I think we we should take that one in time, no matter what. Like, that could have been opened at any point in time when Burn okay. is around. Like, um, and well, yeah, I don't, no, I I I don't know what to do with this, this issue. All right, so why don't, why don't you go back and figure out more about this issue? Because right now, that doesn't sound right to me. Okay. Um, it would be easier just to say don't authentic code check anything. Yeah. All right. Um, which, all right. So, Bob, what do we do with this bug? Uh, do we leave it on triage until Heath gets back? Do we say no, and then Heath can reopen it for triage when he finds out more about it? Maybe just do that because if anything, it sounds like it's only the third option, and if that's not related to always doing the hash check, then I'll just open a new one anyway. All right, that sounds fine with me. Oops. All right, so then that takes us to the directories, and I've been thinking about this one for quite a while. So I just want to make sure I understand. This essentially says allow perfect collisions between directories, right? Right. Um, this is the thing that we had talked about that I never got around to. Right, um, and so 
the and I actually worked with Toby to implement it, so it's still the basic idea we talked about before. He just ended up doing the code since he was working on Swix. So the thing that's not clear to me is what happens if you have a directory ref? Does it end up like bringing in all references to all directories across all the fragments that it can see where this directory might be designed, which is very different because no other reference. No, the, the way it was implemented was that um, you still need a directory if, to actually define the directory itself. Yeah. Um, if you don't, then it actually still is treated like an unresolved ref. So, but what happens if when I have, because this is about allowing that directory, I you know, the directory element for the same ID to be defined in many places. So I could put it all over the place. Like, I could wrap every component with a directory ref, program files folder, directory ID equals install folder, you know, name equals foo component, and then go to another fragment and do the same thing all, all over the place. So I end up with foo, the install folder of foo, defined in however many fragments I had it in. And if I had one directory ref to install folder somewhere else, Suddenly, I pull in a gazillion fragments, or however right, many times unless it's defined. You, well, if, presumably, if you don't want those things, you want to be linking them in. You want, I, I huh? If you, if, you, if you didn't want all those gazillion things, you wouldn't be linking them in. Right. I'm just saying, this makes directory ref now pull in many IDs, where it would be the only ref that does that that I can think of. No other ref does that. That's It's, it's a... It's weird. It's different. And I just want to understand, like, that is what would happen. Yes. Okay. Okay. But so far, like I said, um, if you didn't actually want something in your product, you you likely wouldn't be linking it. This has actually been working for us pretty good, across, you know, with a huge product that is VS. Well, no, it's just, it's interesting in the, it's, it, yeah, you just have to be careful when you do the directory ref and then all the other places that we create directory ref. So you could accidentally cause a component with like a shortcut in it that has a working directory to bring mm -hmm. in all these other components that you didn't intend to bring in. Uh, yeah, that would be true, yeah. It, and, and, and you could do it simply by accidentally changing the set of WXS files that were included in your project file. <laughs> like, you just like add a couple files, remove a couple files, everything works, always worked, but the output of your MSI changes radically based off of what files you include or didn't include, which we don't do today because of all the crazy patching things that could happen when you did yeah. that. Well, so, so this raises a good question. Um, did Swix ever make it into Wix 3X then, or is it just focused on 4? Simplified Wix is in 4, because we're doing okay, changes so like this to support this kind of stuff in simplified Wix, because this is, you know, this has really interesting implications to the language and what happens that we right. can play with in four. That's what I'm thinking is maybe we should just punt this to four then. I mean, th this was to support Swix. I mean, yeah, it does work with traditional, or as I've been calling it, Twix right. it's for kids. Yeah. But um, so yeah, I I agree. Let's put this in four, and because I'm actually playing with this right now in four. Um, okay. So let's put this in four and go see what it means, because. It's all those other questions that I had that I wasn't quite sure how to I wasn't sure how to communicate them and what they would do. So let's put this in four. Um, you can switch the bug, assign it to me because it is the thing I'm actually working on right now, and we'll yeah. go. Is, is Bob doing that, or do you want me to go ahead and do that? No, no, I, I'll let you two fight over it. Bob, you want to do that? Bob's gone to sleep. Bob's muted I can do it, it's no problem. I, just, it, it, I, I don't mind doing myself. it. I, was just, I wasn't sure if he Bob was treating Bob muted it himself and couldn't answer. Well, I, I'm very curious to see what his sarcastic answer may have been. I answered several times, and the, the answer was always, I'm done. I already fixed it. All right. That's the sarcastic answer I wanted to hear. Okay. Thank That's you very much. Uh, very cool, Heath. Glad to see you guys are <laughs> around again, at least. Hopefully, we'll see you continue to hang yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know if I would say you guys. I, I basically picked <laughs> up the torch and started working with LCA directly. Then that's awesome, and I appreciate that, and I, I wish you the best Yeah, sorry it's taking so long. Yeah, it's the way it is. All right, so we got through almost, well, this one's going to go away. So we got through 25, 26 bugs, maybe, right, Bob? 27. 27, we got the extra one. We got the extra one. The, the one that came in. Oh, right, because right, we picked up one or two that we picked up as they came in. Yeah. Um, all right, so this always hash verify thing, we'll have to go back and <laughs> just 
just want to understand what's going on there. <laughs> Cause, uh, and then, all right, cool. And that leaves us with bummer. <laughs> I am bummed. I really wanted us to get down to low hundreds, but Heath had to come back and provide all this interesting <laughs> stuff for us to sit around and think about. All right. So at this point, I think we're done. Um, I want to have a quick thing since we have a bit of the gallery hanging out. Um, next week, anybody want to do uh, Thursday next week? Do I get any takers? Yes? No? Yes? Any yeses? I'm around. You're around. So I have one. I need it, probably one more as a tiebreaker. I, right. And I need no mites. I need somebody out there that say, oh, yeah, I totally love to dial in the day after Christmas. Or I'm definitely not showing up the day after Christmas. You guys are crazy. All right, so John will be around. So I'm going to try to insert, a, 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 what is this, 12.9. Um, so John will be around. Now, how about New Year's Eve? So the 31st. This is before you go out and get drunk and celebrate right. everything. That's important. Yes, that's important. So no checking in after drinking. I learned that as an intern. Um um, wait, that's not still a rule, right? <laughs> I don't know. We're older now, wiser. So, um, older. okay. So I, I, we're, I'm going to go back and probably toss in a couple of meetings, 26th and 31. Uh, 24, day before Christmas, all that. Go be with your family and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I made that, things like that. And so we'll do, I'll add those meetings for the end of the year. And then... And oh, and then the second. I'm assuming people are back on work for the second, right? Because you know, New Year's Day, you have all day to recover. You guys should be back around, right? Oh yes, I like this John Cooper guy. He's like all over it. I am all over it. Plus, he's been extremely vocal as we've been going along. So, um, I'm going to send out meeting requests for the next three days, which means you all get next Tuesday off, and the rest of you back to work after that. It'll be fun. I have this dream that we're going to get into the low hundreds, and if we add these three days, maybe we will do that. Lebenzu Arbit... I do not know what that means. You have to translate that into live to work. <laughs> I love it. Lebenzu Arbit... That's not... I have no idea what language that originally is. All right. So, um, I'm not even going to try to guess. Anyway, wonderful time. Laban. Oh, thank you. See, I... Me and my... Uh, Mary. All right. So, did we get rid of this first one? Oh, Heath's going to take care of that first one and make it go away, correct? German. Oh, very good. All right, so we'll call that good. We will see you guys in about, I guess, a week from now, right? Yeah. A week? Yes, a week. And we'll go dig into these bugs. We had a few more interesting ones today and not nearly as many. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe we have five-year-old bugs. But on the flip side, if you look here, because this bug from Heath is going to go away, we are into the five-year-old bugs. And just for fun, because we're at the very, very end, I want to point out, because it is fun, Ooh, we're down to one bug on this last page of nine years ago. But no fear, there's actually a number of nine-year-old bugs down here, too. So that will be fun to go back and tackle. So as always, it's been fun hanging out. Um, I think that's all we got. So go have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening. Go to sleep if that's what you're going to do. Um, or go to work if that's your thing, which is mine. And I'll see you guys uh, after Christmas. So have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, we'll see you before the new year. I'll wish you a good new year on the Tuesday. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.